My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. Hello and welcome to episode number 79 of the 120 days to learn physics with Flash Isaac. In episode number 32 and episode number 34, under chemistry, I analyzed electrolysis and the electrochemical cells. I explained that there are substances or materials that conduct electricity in when they are in solid state. For example, copper. Copper is a metal and it is a good conductor of electricity. So the wires you see, they are either copper or aluminium or any other metal. These elements, they conduct electricity and while conducting, they remain in that solid state. On the other hand, there are materials or substances that only conduct electricity when they are in molten state or when they are in solution. Molten state means when they've met it, when they met. So these substances that conduct electricity when only when they are in molten state or solution are referred to as electrolytes. Now, if you want to get the best out of this class, please watch the episode 32 and 34 of the chemistry series or 32 to 34. You learn a lot of things there. The electrochemical series, uh, the migration of ions, the electrolysis of brine, and a whole lot, and a whole lot, even application of electrolysis. So I won't go deep into that. It is not required here. Episode number 79. This episode we focus on electric cells. Electric cells. What are electric cells? Electric cells are devices that convert chemical energy to electrical energy. When you talk about transducers, these are energy converted. Remember, the law of conservation of energy says that energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can change from one form to another. Your pressing iron converts electrical energy to heat energy. When you are pressing, you see heat being dissipated. Even this electrical bulb, they generate heat. Then your speaker at home while playing music, you see that electrical energy or electrical signals are converted into sound. So, in this case of electrical cells, they convert chemical energy, batteries generally, they convert chemical, stored chemical energy into electrical energy, electrical cells. Now, if you hear or when you hear electrical cells, there is something else that rings in your brain. It is, this is it. Is cell the same thing as battery? Is electrical cell the same thing as battery? This is a very valid question. So I shall quickly run through the differences or similarities between battery and electrical cells to clear your mind. And by the way, electrical cells, they comprise two terminals, the positive and the negative terminals. In batteries generally or in cell, we say that the positive terminals are the high potential and the negative are the low potential. So current will move from positive to negative. And the flow of electron is opposite to the flow of current. So if current is flowing from positive to negative, electrons will be flowing in the reverse of current. We shall do that under current electricity. That is a very, very interesting topic that we shall get into. Right. Let's compare cells and battery. First, a 
cell is a single unit. Why battery usually consists of group of cells? If you are a biology student, you understand that cell is the unit of life. So minute, the simplest unit of life. And if similar cells come together to perform specific function, which means instead of this cell, we have many of them, we call them tissue. Now, if this tissue now, there's another tissue like this, another tissue like this, another tissue like this, they come together to perform similar or specific task or duty. We call that group of tissues organ. Now, if you have this organ, then another organ like this, and another organ like this, like that and like that, they come together to perform a similar or specific function, we call them system. So you see the unit of life starts from cell, from cell to organ, organ to tissue, tissue to system. If you are a chemistry student, you will remember that Chemistry is the study of the composition, property, and uses of matter. You also agree with me that matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. You also agree with me that the smallest unit of matter is referred to as atom. So just like cell is the smallest or the unit of life, atom is the unit of matter now atoms cannot exist independently they are so reactive so what happens one atom runs to meet another atom they go body at such we say okay molecule has been formed so if this is hydrogen it cannot exist on its own or start alone it will meet another hydrogen to form hydrogen molecule this is why we say that Molecule is the simplest or smallest part of a substance that can exist on its own or that can exist independently. So the atom itself cannot exist independently, they hardly exist independently. Now back to cell. If you see a car battery or battery for anything around or inverter in your house, that big inverter you see or that big car battery you see, there are different cells arranged to make up that battery. So that is it. So cell, group of cells arranged either in series or parallel, you arrange them, you give rise to battery. So I can basically say that cell and battery, we are talking about the same thing. Just that battery contains many cells, as simple as that. Then to create a simple cell, you can place two different electrodes, that is two different metals in an electrolyte, two wires are then used to connect those metals to a voltmeter. So a cell is formed, a simple cell. When you have two different electrodes, that is two different metals, you dip them inside a substance, an electrolyte, then two or more wires are now used to connect the metals to a voltmeter. Voltmeter is an instrument that is used to measure voltage. I think we'll do more of that under uh, uh, DC uh, circuit or current electricity. You see more of that. Now, cells are cheaper than batteries, of course, because batteries are many cells put together. Now, a cell supplies power for a shorter period of time because it's just a single unit. It cannot supply much power. Now, when you have so many cells, you combine their power or their current, of course, you are going to supply current for a longer period of time. Cells are mostly for lighter uses, like clocks, very light uses. So they don't deliver so much power for a long period of time. Meanwhile, battery is for heavy duty tasks like your car. Your car battery. Without your car battery, the car will not start. Without battery, your car remote is not going to work. Without battery, your electrical system is not going to work. Without battery, your boot will not open. Without battery, your time will reset. So battery contains, uh, controls all the electrical functions, all the sensors in your car. So for you to do that, it means you uh, that is a heavy duty or inverter in your house the inverter batteries if you have much inverter batteries you can basically power your house for 24 hours continuously 
like that delivers a lot of power. Like 200 amp hour battery, you have many of them. 8, 16, can carry a lot of things in your house. And by the way, current from batteries or cells are mostly direct current. Currents can be direct or alternative. Direct currents, they are current that they don't change their direction of flow. They just flow straight like this. And because they flow in only one direction and they don't change, this is why they have terminal. If you have battery like this, and they say here is positive and here is negative. If you are connecting anything to battery, you must connect positive to positive and negative to negative. Otherwise, it will not work. Now, let's see alternative current. Alternative current, they are current that change direction continuously while they are flowing. So they go from positive to negative, negative to positive. In alternative current, you cannot say here is positive or negative. Any current that is from your wall socket in your electricity at home, your plug or your stuff, your TV. So those um current, that current is alternating current. So if you have a charger head, anywhere you plug it or your TV with two mouths like this, if you plug it like this, it will turn on. If you remove it and you turn it like this and plug, it will turn on. This is because in alternating current, there is basically no terminal. You can use anywhere as positive or as negative. But for direct current, terminals are so so respected. Now, by the way, most electronics at home, they don't make use of the current from your NEPA or from your gen because those are alternating current. They don't work for them. So what happens is there's a device inside each of your electronics that converts that direct current, that converts that alternating current to direct current. And that device is basically referred to as a diode, yes, to rectify your current. And we have something else. Solar cells convert sunlight energy into electrical energy. So any cell that converts sunlight energy into electrical energy is referred to as solar cell. Ladies and gentlemen, I think this should be an interesting introduction to electric cells. And by the way, electric cells can be classified as either primary or secondary. So let's see the difference between primary cells and secondary cells before we call this episode the primary and secondary cells. In other words, primary and secondary batteries. What are the discrepancies, the dichotomy between primary and secondary cells? Number one, 001. In primary cells, current is produced as a result of an irreversible chemical change. Irreversible chemical change. I told you that in this is like this topic is giving me chemistry vibe. I said that we have physical changes and chemical changes. A physical change is a change where no new substance is formed and it is reversible. May, uh, if you put water in the freezer, then it freezes and gives rise to an ice block. Once that ice block melts, it turns back to the water in liquid state. That is a reversible reaction. Now, when you burn a piece of paper, that is a chemical change. A new substance is formed and it is not reversible or rusting of iron. So for primary cells, the process that gives birth to them is an irreversible chemical change. So a change that cannot be reversed, which means it takes place in only forward re reaction. Other chemical equilibrium and Le Chatelier's principle. I explained the concept of irreversible reaction, that is chemistry now. I said that before then, only re uh, forward reaction we had known, straight reaction. They would say, if A react with B, it gives C and D. This is an irreversible reaction. Now, secondary cells, they are produced, but the current in secondary cells are produced by a reversible chemical reaction. It means it is reversible. I also explained reversible reaction. I said that if A react with B to give you something like this, C 
plus D. This represents a reversible reaction. This one means if A combine with B to give you C and D, C and D can also combine to give you back A and B. So there is forward reaction and it can also occur in the backward reaction. So current is produced for secondary cell by a chemical change that you can reverse. Number two, primary cells must be discarded after use. Meanwhile, secondary cells cannot be discarded after use. Why must we discard primary cells after use? Because the current in primary cell is irreversible, it's only forward. So when the current discharges in the forward reaction, that is up. So there is nothing left here. But for secondary cells, if A and B react and the current discharges, it means everything here has gone to this place. So this one now will now react to give you back what was gotten. So this can be discarded after use what should be discarded. Even your remote battery and some kind of battery. When you are done with them, you throw them away, you buy new ones. But for your car battery or your generator battery, if your generator is not able to charge the battery and it runs down, you can go and recharge it. So secondary cells can be recharged by passing current backward through them. Right. So if forward is discharging, when you pass current backward, so backward will not be charging. Also, primary cells can be called dry cells since basically or mostly there is no liquid or fluid inside. Meanwhile, secondary cells are made up of molten salts and wet salts. Molten salts. When you hear molten, electrolytes come to your mind. These are substances that conduct electricity when they are in molten state or in solution. Which means, for secondary cells, electrolytes are present. Electrolysis can actually exist. Electrolysis is splitting by means of direct current. When you pass direct current through a substance, and it splits into its component ions and all those ions begin to migrate to the electrodes like cathode or anode these are positive and negative electric rods so that's also under electrolysis i gave a detailed electrolysis class i did that and i'm proud of myself primary cells they have high density energy density and they are slow to discharge that means the energy per or space or per volume is much they are thicker but here they have smaller energy density so which means for secondary cell you can actually open it and have space with them but for this one it is compact primary cells they have high internal resistance resistance is the opposition to the flow of current spoiler alert we know it there but from ohm's law voltage is proportional to current which means as voltage increases current increases so voltage is what actually pushes the current voltage is proportional to current but there is a problem as current is flowing there is something that prevents the flow of current resistance current to the flow but it resists okay good example if you are traveling on the way either you are driving or your dad's car or public transport, you see that as a car is moving, it gets to a point, it breaks, it uh, slows down, climb a speed bump, come down, then move again. Now what is happening? The as speed bump is opposing the speed. If not for those speed bumps, the car will be able to move straight. But because of that, it is reducing. So as, as the car encounters that bump, it will drop in speed, which means as current encounters resistance or obstacle, voltage will drop. So for every resistance encountered, voltage begins to drop. But resistance is in two forms. We have the um, terminal resistance or the external resistance or normal resistance, and we have the internal resistance. If you have an electric circuit with batteries, bulb, loads, and wire, the resistance offered outside the battery is the external resistance or the resistance. But the resistance in the battery itself that opposes current, that prevents all the EMF in the cell to come out, that is internal resistance. So the internal resistance in primary cells is more as such, less current. But for secondary, that's lower internal resistance. So less, more current flow. 
the lesser the speed bump, the more you can actually go on the road. Now, primary tests are smaller and lighter in design, of course, since battery, uh, while secondary tests are more complex and heavier. Examples of primary cells are Daniel cell and Leclanche cell. Daniel and Leclanche or whatever. Why for secondary cells? Lithium ion, nickel cadmium, lead acid accumulator. Lithium ion or nickel cadmium, these are batteries used in your phone, your cell phone, your Android phone, iPhone. They basically use all these secondary cells. This is why you can recharge your phone when it runs down. Then lead acid accumulator. They actually, uh, the example is the battery used in your generator. That battery generator is heat start. The one in your car, they are basically heat. So we shall look at all these examples. Daniel cells, this other guy, lead acid, and all these cells in the next episode. And I do hope you found this class interesting. Don't fail to install the Flash Learners application and begin to practice working. If you don't have the app on your phone, I will actually boldly say that you are very, very wrong. You need that application to study, to do well. And I can't wait to see you in the next episode. Take care of yourself.